Okay, so hi all. Oh, sorry. Just uh, hi all. My name is Dennis Pryor, and I'm here with my colleagues Michael Barraclough and Melissa Spencer to present our project, Object Seven: Grave Street Townhouses. Registering to the street as a restored heritage building with a contemporary mansard roof, this is a contextually sensitive work of architecture that seeks to resolve a series of complex considerations into a spatially, formally, and materially coherent proposition. A refined design that carries the inherent challenges of commercially driven housing within a singular architectural language. To begin with some context, our practice object subject is a relatively new concern. Established some five years ago with a commitment to pursuing an architecture of critical, formal and spatial depth, we approach, we approach all projects regardless of their commission with an ambition for high quality and thoughtfully resolved design. As with many other small practices, our early years have followed the familiar trajectory of dead end competition entries and small renovations for friends and family. Our ambitions to develop a coherent architectural language offset against the challenge of, of desperately, and it must be said not very successfully, trying to stay financially viable. In this early work, some of which is included on this slide, we hope you can see the emergence of an abiding concern for geometric rigor, spatial formal and structural resolution and material precision. Now this narrative of emerging practice may sound somewhat familiar. Academic and disciplinary ambition played out through the lens of a series of small and programmatically simple projects. Somewhat uniquely, however, very early in the life of our practice, we were afforded an opportunity to work on two housing development projects. The project we are presenting to you today in Fitzroy and its sister, a series of 11 townhouses in Paran, also now completed and shown on the next slide, side by side with the project we are presenting today. Now we concede that neither the ambitions we hold for our practice nor the early work we had developed through our private residential projects were necessarily a natural precursor to the real politic negotiations of housing projects, where in place of the polite bourgeoisie clientele we were familiar with, one finds a commercial developer and a full team of consultants pursuing the most efficient means possible. And so to be completely honest, engaging in the design process on our first multi-res projects came as somewhat of a shock. Nonetheless, the opportunity presented and as it were, we were keen to get our hands dirty. We have a social conscience to contribute to a broader discussion on the housing crisis in our city, and we saw an opportunity to work at scale and to engage in a sector with a clear need for architectural sophistication. The challenge we set ourselves, and which we hope you will agree we have somewhat achieved in the project we are presenting to you today, was to hold to our ambitions for our architecture whilst engaging fully in the exigencies of commercially driven development housing, and in so doing to present a vision for inner suburban housing futures in our city. Engaging enthusiastically in the design process, naively no doubt, we were immediately struck by the complexity of competing imperatives, the opposing pressures on the design process from a range of stakeholders which produces an apparent lack of any space from which a considered architecture might emerge. As described in this diagram, we found ourselves in a flattened space between the diametrically imposed imperatives from our client on the one hand, pushing outwards to maximise the value of land, and on the other hand, the provisions of the planning scheme and our concern for the amenity of our neighbours pushing the project back in on itself. While this tension of client ambition and civic amenity is most likely not a revelatory proposition in this company, it seemed to us that the natural equilibrium of these pressures leads to a predetermined envelope, resulting in the emergence of a formal language that has little to do with architectural sophistication and more to do with a pragmatic stasis, a sense of inevitability, another built expression of the res code envelope. We wanted more for our architecture than this and indeed believe the future residents of our housing projects are entitled to a more generous proposition. Our response was to engage deeply with the context and to find a formal language for the project that could simultaneously maximise volume for housing while sympathetically engaging the rhythm, scale and character of the street, albeit in contemporary terms. The site, highlighted here in red, sits to the western end of Grave Street just prior to its termination into Brunswick Street between Johnston and Gertrude. A structural and heritage review very quickly identified that while the Grave Street frontage of the site could be retained, the remainder would essentially be cleared for future development. Perhaps the defining characteristic of the site and of most relevance with respect to informing both the project constraints and our design process is the fact that it negotiates a clear shift in scale and type from the mixed use corridor of Brunswick Street, which you can see running north south more or less through the centre of this image, and the modest scale of the mostly single storey single fronted dwellings which define the fabric of this part of Fitzroy. At the scale of the site itself, to the west sits a grand Victorian corner edifice, a key marker in the architectural language of Brunswick Street which via its various agglomerations and outbuildings extends all the way to Exhibition Lane, which defines the west of our site. While to the east, there is a radical reduction in grain and scale to a series of Edwardian era workers' cottages. The particulars of our site and the portion of the existing building to be retained respond to this transitional character. The detailed brick facade and the width of the lot clearly referencing the grain and register of Brunswick Street, while the roof form and scale in the third dimension ensure the existing building sits comfortably within the character of Greaves. As shown in the analysis on this slide, we were taken by the pattern of roof forms which clearly characterise the architectural logic of the existing fabric, 
the south side of Grey Street on which our site sits defined by a regular cadence of express gables and pitched roof forms. We saw this shift in scale and type converging on our project site, not so much as a problem to be solved, but as an opportunity, particularly in relation to the challenges associated with the design of housing projects as outlined in my introduction. That is to say, it seemed to us that a carefully considered response to this context could present as an alibi for contemporary architecture. Following a series of morphological step diagrams, which we have prepared to explain our formal generation process. Firstly, we established the site conditions and constraints. You can see here the retained heritage facade to Greve Street and a clearly defined base building block occupying the full extent of the site. We then extruded the full site to the maximum height limit as zoned. The upper volume is set back to align with adjacent built form and the ground floor is indented to define townhouse entries to exhibition lane. We then inflected the first floor facade to provide a view of the chimney of the adjacent heritage building to retain the rhythm and character of the urban form when seen from Brunswick Street. The eastern side of the envelope is inclined to minimise overshadowing and visual bulk. And in a key move, we then triangulated the form at its northern street facing end to minimise visual bulk and re-establish the sequence of pitched roof profiles within the streetscape. The entire upper form is lifted above the existing building to provide a clear separation between old and new. And finally, the envelope of the upper form is offset to create a continuous rain screen that obscures the mass of the building, allows the new volume to read as an abstract form and shades the northern and western facades and glazing from afternoon sun. The final form of the project seen here from the northwest corner of Greve Street registers as a restored heritage building with a contemporary mansard roof, an abstract and singular intervention into the streetscape. In true elevation, you can clearly see our response to the urban fabric as an unashamedly contemporary form that nonetheless responds to and sits comfortably within its condition. Perhaps most impressive about this image and the architectural approach we have described more generally is the fact that when seen from the street, there is little indication of the density of housing held on the site, a coherent architectural expression that gives little away. The material language of the project is elegant and refined. A solid brick plinth keys into the heritage facade and holds the edges of the site beneath an ephemeral upper volume wrapped by a perforated metal rain screen. The west elevation has a series of bifold screens which animate the building to exhibition lane ensuring that depending on the pattern of occupation of the dwellings and the time of day, the facade oscillates between abstract singular screen and a domestic streetscape with a rhythm that reveals its interior logic. Mike, I think you're slightly behind me there. Oh, yeah. There are seven townhouses in total. Standard types are repeated for the majority of the development with a unique type sitting within the heritage fabric of the Grave Street frontage. Each of the standard townhouses has an upside down living arrangement, taking advantage of solar access and opportunities for outlook at the upper levels. All townhouses have a roof deck and parking on the ground floor. Here is a view along the Western facade, taking in the previously dark and secluded exhibition lane, now enlivened and activated by the entrances and living room windows of the dwellings. Since completion, residents have embraced the laneway as an extension of their properties and the opportunity this affords to participate in this unique form of public space so important to the life of our inner suburbs. One minute. Thank you. The front doors are carefully detailed to sit comfortably within the contemporary and taut skin of the building fabric, whilst nonetheless providing a sense of address and definition to the dwellings. The Grave Street Heritage facade was carefully restored. Uh, the Grave Street Heritage facade was carefully restored with a series of respectful interventions ensuring it can accommodate a fit for purpose high quality contemporary dwelling. In the interest of time, I will not talk through each of the plans. Suffice to say that we have included them in the presentation for reference and very happy to take questions at the conclusion of the presentation. Interiors are clean, simple and utilitarian and seek to provide long term flexibility for occupants with occasional moments of spatial drama and excellent access to light and outlook. In this image, you can see how an external space is carved into the void between the heritage fabric and the new form, the parapet of the facade acting as a balustrade and privacy screen for the, for the space. The joinery. Oh, sorry, go ahead. The, the joinery is modest and constructed from robust materials, but nevertheless thoughtfully detailed to provide a sense of domesticity and texture to the otherwise simply formed spaces. And notwithstanding the challenges described at the outset of this presentation, great care has been taken to design even the most utilitarian of spaces with detail and elegant simplicity. 